mercy and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, the true vine to whom we are connected, Jesus Christ. There should be a parenthesis in the title of this sermon, and it's this. And I want you to note this. Christ in me. Christ in me. Have you ever faced a challenge or a difficulty in life that was so overwhelming, so challenging, you wondered, how am I ever going to cope with this? How am I ever going to get through this? How many of you can say that at one time or another in your life? Raise your hand, yeah. Okay. We've had a lot of challenges, as all of us do in life, but one challenge that came to mind when I was writing this sermon was back in 1988. At that time, we had three children, Tim, Ruth, and Ben, ages seven, five, and one. And we had done family planning, and, and we said, we are set. You know, we have three kids. This is wonderful. This is the way it's going to be. Um, we're not going to have any more kids. This is just a tremendous blessing of God. We're satisfied with what we have. Everything is set. And then the Lord, the Lord had a surprise for us. And immediately we wondered, how in the world are we going to deal with this? Oh my goodness, the meals and, and the, the trips and the bedtime and, and oh my goodness, the meals and discipline and soccer games and baseball games. We thought, we're fine with three, we can handle that, but we're not sure we emphasize on we. We can handle that. Now, when you're a parent, two parents, it's not so bad when it's three against two, if you know what I mean, okay? But now it's going to be two against one, if you will, twice as many of them as us. And then about that time, there was a, a lot of information about how much it costs to raise children and how much money you spend by the time they graduate from high school. At that time, it was 200000 and we thought, oh my goodness, 200000 that's over a million dollars. I wasn't very good at math then. That's over a million dollars. How, how, how are we going to do this? And then I thought, and then wedding. I got one daughter. Weddings. Oh my goodness, weddings are so expensive. Maybe it'll be a boy. It wasn't. The question we had 30 years ago is, how will we cope? How will we do this? Are there challenges in your life where you say the same thing? I'll bet there are. You have to go through a surgery and you say, how am I going to cope with that? How am I going to get through that? Or, you're dealing with an addiction and you wonder, how am I going to get through that? How am I going to overcome that? Or possibly you're preparing to lose a loved one or you're thinking about, as I do, what's life going to be like if the Lord would ever call one of my kids or my wife away? Heaven forbid, how will I, how will I deal with that? How will I have that conversation with my wife or with my husband, you might be thinking, that's difficult. How am I going to confront my kids about their behavior? How am I going to deal with the situation at work with a fellow employee or someone who's under me and I'm their supervisor and the conversation you know is going to be difficult? How am I going to deal with that? How am I going to do the right thing when every, everyone around me is doing the wrong thing? How am I going to face temptation and somehow when so many people around me are succumbing and giving in, how am I going to say no and stop and resist? How will I do that? You probably know where I'm going. I asked my son last night, you know, when we face all these challenges in life, son, how do we cope with it? And he goes, duh, dad, <laughs> with the Lord. And I said, but son, 
it goes deeper than that. And that's why I want you to be in church tomorrow and hear what I have to say because it goes much deeper than that. It's much more powerful and profound than just that, than Jesus just kind of hanging out with us and being with us. It is so much more powerful and evident in our text what it means when Jesus Christ abides in us. And I want you to think about that. Jesus Christ abiding, making residence, making his home in us. I was talking about with a couple guys before church what that means. And this one fellow said, my goodness, that's profound. That's powerful. That's amazing. That Christ dwells in us? Absolutely. And you might be saying, where does that come from? It comes right from our text. It's a powerful text. And I encourage you to look at it with me. This is what Jesus said. He was talking about, by the way, there were as many vines and branches connected to the vine, mainly, obviously, in grape orchards, if you will, binds all over Palestine. So Jesus oftentimes looked around and would try to communicate the word by using everyday examples. We talked about the sheep and shepherd a few weeks ago, how there were shepherd and sheep all over Palestine. And as he was talking, all people had to do was look around and see what Jesus was talking about when he said, I am the good shepherd. And the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Now he's talking about he being the vine. And people saw grapevines regularly. And so he says this, I am the vine, you are the branches. Now if you know anything about grapes, you know a vine comes up out of the ground. Its roots are in the ground. And there are branches, obviously, connected to the vine. And if that branch has a healthy connection to the vine, the life of the vine, listen to this, the life of the vine flows into that branch. And as a result of that, it bears fruit. Grapes are produced. Now Jesus makes his correlation. I am the vine. By faith, you are a branch connected to me. And my life, my peace, my joy, my contentment, my pardon, my security, my promise of eternal life flows into you. How cool is that? But that's not it. That's not all. Look at what he says. I'm the vine, you are the branches. Whoever, listen to this, abides in me, is connected to, has a relationship with, is committed to me, Jesus is saying. Whoever abides in me, look look at this. This is what I would encourage you to circle in your mind, if, if nothing else. Whoever abides in me and I, where? In him. Quite frankly, I go weeks without thinking about Jesus Christ dwelling in me. Jesus Christ taking up residence in my heart, making my body his dwelling place. It says right here that if you trust in him, if you're connected to him by faith, All these wonderful things flow into your life like a flood, but also he comes and makes residence, abides in us. Pretty powerful. Second part of it, he is it that bears much fruit. And when when we talk about fruit, obviously we're talking about the good works we carry out. We're talking about the things that we say and do that please God. But also for our intention today, bearing fruit means coping with and surviving through and dealing with the adversities we go through through the strength that Jesus Christ gives dwelling in us. That's what I'm talking about specifically today. We can talk about, you know, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Those are the fruits of the Spirit. That's the byproduct of us being connected to Jesus. That his life and salvation and peace flows into us. That is the byproduct of being connected to Christ. But what I want to focus on today more than anything is the indwelling Lord Jesus Christ giving us power to overcome obstacles, to face our fears, to deal with adversity, and to persevere through it. Through his strength. Through his presence. Through his blessing. Remember what I said? My wife and I, when we determined that we were going to have another child, or really the Lord did. Number four was on its way, and the question we asked, and the question we so often ask is, how will I, or how will we, 
my wife and I, deal with this. Think about how many times you've said in life, how am I going to cope? How am I going to deal with this? And the marvelous thing I'm trying to tell you today is you don't have to. It's Christ in you who does it. We know that Jesus Christ suffered and bled and died on the cross to win forgiveness of sins for us, to make our bodies a pure and holy temple. And when you, by faith, put your trust in Jesus Christ, he comes in and he cleans us up and he makes your heart, listen to this, he makes your heart his home. Woo! Whoops. How cool is that? Really? It's a supernatural thought. It's a powerful thought that we never face any adversity, any challenge, any problem on our own. Jesus Christ, almighty God, lives inside of me. Some people say, how do you preach the way you do? It ain't me. It's Jesus. How did you persevere through that difficulty? It wasn't you. It was Jesus. And he came and made his dwelling inside of you in your holy baptism. I think of what one child told the pastor, you know, he was two years old, and, he, and this was totally off the cuff, not rehearsed. He asked the little boy, little Johnny, are you ready to be baptized? You know what little Johnny said? I sure am, pastor. Water on my head, Jesus in my heart. How profound is that? Something we just kind of skip over and forget. Jesus Christ is a vine. We are the branches connected to him. We rest and find peace and security and joy and pardon in him. But he comes and makes our heart his home. He comes to dwell inside of us. Look at this. This is from Ephesians chapter 2. Look at what this says. That Christ may dwell in your hearts. That Jesus Christ, omnipotent God, almighty Jesus, comes to dwell in your heart through faith in what he has done. Look at this one. This is 1 John 3, 24. Whoever keeps his commands abides in God and God in him. That God abides Rest takes residency in us. This is John 14. In that day, you will know that I am in my Father and you in me. And what? Jesus Christ in us. So we talked about the challenges we face in life. And let's ask those questions again, you know. How are you going to cope with that surgery? How are you going to overcome that addiction? How are you going to deal with that loss? How are you going to have that difficult confrontational conversation with a wife or husband or son or daughter or boss or employee? How are you going to face that temptation and go the other direction? How are you going to make decisions that honor God instead of going with the flow of our culture? It is not us. It is Christ in us that does it. The pessimist says it can't be done. The humanist says it might be done. The believer in Jesus Christ says it will be done. Through Jesus, who dwells in me. I quoted this to my wife, and I don't think it's, I, there's very little original stuff that I say, but I said, you know, I get it, Beth. It's Christ surrounding us and his indwelling presence strengthening us. She said, write that down. That was good. That was good. Write it down. It's Christ surrounding us and his indwelling presence strengthening us for any challenge we face in life. And here's the deal. You can look back over your life and you can ask that question, how did I deal with that? How did I cope with that? How did I get through that? And you know the answer. It was Christ. 
I just talked to a wonderful guy by the name of Cal Smith this morning, and he said, man, I give all glory to Christ. He had a surgery this past week. He said, I give all glory to Christ. It's Christ in me. It's Christ who does it. His, his life just exudes Jesus Christ. Does yours? Or do you face any challenge in life thinking, I've got to handle this. I've got to deal with this. I've got to persevere through this. I've got to overcome this. I, 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 instead of him, 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 dwelling in me. So let's look at the two take-home points. Here's the application for you today. When challenges come, lean less on you and lean more on Christ in you. I'd write that down, by the way. When challenges come, lean less on you, lean more on Christ. There's two parts of us. I shared this with a guy yesterday. There's two parts of us that we have inside of us when we become Christians, right? Can I get an amen, right? Okay. <laughs> what are those two parts? Old man and the new man. The old man is totally intolerant of God, wants to desist, run away from, and dishonor God. When temptations come your way, there is something inside of you called the old man, the sinful nature that says, that looks good, that looks great, I'm going to succumb. Also, a lot of times, we as Christians try to lean on our own strength, our own vitality, our own integrity, which is nil. Jesus said in this text, apart from me, you can do what? Nothing. And so we try to face this stuff on our own, leaning on our own strength, our own ingenuity, our own power. And do you know what? That doesn't work. Have you ever noticed that when you dishonor Jesus, when you put him out of the picture, when you don't lean on him, when you say, I can deal with this on my own and completely dismiss the presence of Jesus inside of you, things don't go well, have you ever noticed that? But when you lean on the indwelling spirit, on the indwelling presence of the Lord Jesus Christ, when you say, Lord Jesus, give me strength. Lord Jesus who dwells in me, I can face this. With the strength that you give, things work out. And so the first point I have for you is lean less on you and more on Christ in you. Secondly, Give Christ the glory when you persevere through whatever challenge comes your way. Give Christ the glory whenever challenges come your way. So the other day, my, uh, my little, I had a hat on, usually on my day off. I'm, I'm glad we live in Firestone because I can go to the grocery store. And on my day off, you know, I look horrible. I don't take a shower. I throw on duddy clothes. I wear jeans, crubby sweatshirt put on a hat, you know, oftentimes backwards. I do not look like I look today. And you're probably thinking, well, we're not looking at much today, really. <laughs> but you wouldn't recognize me, you know. As a matter of fact, when we lived here in Arvada, people sometimes would see me at King Supers on my day off and they wouldn't recognize me, okay? So my son, we're sitting there in the chair, we're eating, I have my hat on, all of a sudden he takes off my hat, and he looks here, he goes, whoa, dude, you're getting really gray. Wow. I said, I've been gray for a long time, dude. You just haven't noticed it. Whoa, dude, I got through that difficulty in a mighty way. I did it. No, it was Jesus Christ in you. You just didn't notice it. St. Paul said these powerful words. It's the epistle reading for today. He said, I know what it's like to be in want. I know what it's like to have nothing. I know what it's like to live in abundance. I know what it's like to live in poverty. No matter what challenge comes my way, I can do all things on my own. I can do all things through the indwelling Jesus Christ 
who gives me the strength. Reuben Hollenbeck is uh, the guy who produces our radio broadcast, and he's a wonderful young man, but I know why. He's a lot like his dad. And I'll never forget Mark Hollenbeck when he was here, a teacher at Lutheran High. They moved way south, so now they're going to a different church. But I remember him saying something after one of my sermons. He said, he said you know what? Any good we do, any good we do, it's Christ in us who does it. As I look back 30 years ago and ask that question when my wife and I were faced with the challenge of four kids, how did we do that? How did we deal with that? We didn't. Christ did it. Through us. The big take home point I want you to get today more than anything else is it's not just Christ surrounding us, it's Christ in us, giving us strength every day to face whatever challenge comes your way. Lean on Him. He is the vine. You are the branch. His life flows into you. And he comes to make his permanent home and dwelling inside of you. How cool is that? Let's close with a word of prayer. Father, we just thank you so much for the presence of you, Lord Jesus, dwelling inside of us. We do face challenges, but we know that we don't face them alone. Thank you for your indwelling spirit and the power and presence of you, Lord Jesus Christ, living inside of us to deal with any challenge that comes our way. And Lord Jesus, forgive us when we give glory to ourselves and not to you for whatever we've done well in life. It's you who dwell in us. You come to take residency in our hearts. Indeed, Water on our head, Jesus in our hearts. Oh God, help that to be front and center in our lives the rest of our days, giving you all the glory and honor and praise whenever we do things well. It's Christ. It's Jesus Christ dwelling in us. In the precious name of you, Lord Jesus, we pray all these things. Amen.